Okay, as promised, we are going to go through how to walk with crutches properly or correctly, as well as when you're off the crutches, how to get rid of that limp that you've developed. Now, whether you're walking in a boot or whether you're not in a boot, whether you've just got an ankle sprain and you're trying to stop it, the crutch walking is the same. A little tip about the crutches. Now, these are armpit crutches, right? There's also elbow crutches. Initially, when you injured yourself, you needed the full support here and stability, so you're probably going to be on these ones, and then maybe you might be down to an elbow crutch, which is just around here and none of this bit. So little tip with these armpit crutches, make sure that you've got a three finger or so gap here, because you don't want that crutch coming up into your, un into your armpit under there, because it's going to start causing nerve problems down through your arm. So what you need to have is these handles here at the right height as well. So this crutch length here will determine how high this goes, and then obviously through here it will determine how high those go. If it's too low, obviously you're gonna drop down. If it's too high, you're gonna bend your elbow. You wanna be able to have a straight elbow like that, so you can really lock your elbows and pull this part into the side of your body like that, and use your lats at the back to then load bear through. And you'll find that when you put weight through here, you can really take the weight off your leg if you need to. Um, and then you won't get, have to sort of rest down on that. The worst thing you can do is rest down on your crutches. So, little tip there. Now, when you're walking, initially, if you've been instructed to take weight off it, okay, so non-weight bearing, obviously you're going to have one leg in the air. So you're going to have crutches forward and step, okay, crutches forward and step, if you're non-weight bearing. But if you're partial weight bearing, there may also be two things. With partial weight bearing, you've got to make sure that your crutches are going with the foot. What you tend to do is, if you've been non-weight bearing, you'll tend to go crutches, lift the leg in the air, step through, crutches, step through. Now when you go from non to partial, you tend to adopt that habit. So what tends to happen is you go forward, and then step, and then take a like that. So you go forward, put all the weight through the crutches, and then still putting weight through the crutches and not much here. What you need to try to do is step forward with the crutch. So as if this is my injured foot, say I'm in the boot, say I've had an ankle sprain, and I want to partially weight bear, I need to put that forward with the crutch. So I'm learning, I'm still partial waving, I can put as much weight through these as possible, or as needed, but I'm not putting all my weight and learning and then just stepping through and not putting weight here. I need to learn to go commit, push through, and then I can roll through here. And at that point there, I need to put as much weight through that leg as I'm either allowed or I can, depending on how much partial weight bearing I've had. All right, and then you step through to that one. So just remember that, it is crutches and foot together, and then stepping through. The second thing what you can try and practice to stop this limp, and we'll show you the, how to stop a limp in a minute without the crutch. What you can do to try and prevent that limp from, ha limp from happening is put, when you put your foot down with the crutches, like you're told to, when you step forward with a good leg, so this is the good leg, when you step forward with that, you've got to try and take a big step with that and then come through. The reason being is when you have a limp, what you tend to do is you take weight off the leg. So if this is my injured leg, I'll step through and I'll quickly take weight off. Now what that does, if you noticed, I've taken a short step on the left because I wanted to quickly get off this foot and get onto this one. So that shortens my step up. Now if I keep doing that, there's my limp and I'm not really weight bearing on this leg. So what you've got to try and do is you've got to take a longer step with the good leg. So you take a normal step with the bad leg, a longer step with the left leg, and that'll make you commit, one, a little bit more weight over that foot as much as you can, so you're spending time weight bearing over there and not a short time by stepping there, you're spending a normal time by getting that leg through you're spending a normal time. Two, you're actually rolling through the foot correctly, landing on your heel, rolling through, and then pushing off. 
if I don't take a big step left, I'll land my heel and then, see that? I didn't do this part. Now that might be because you've got a rear step angle and you need to work on that. Some people come off those crutches too early as well. So they might go, oh, I'm sick of the crutches. So they just get around limping like this. But they create more of a habit of a limp. What you may need to do is go back to a crutch or maybe one crutch even. Maybe you don't need two, just one. Because if you can't put weight through that leg because it's too sore or it's too stiff, you can't you have enough time because of the stiffness you've got enough time to get there, you're walking too slow. What you should do is have this crutch in the injured side. So if I show you this is my good leg, bad leg, that crutch and leg go together. Now what I'm doing is making sure that crutch is very close to my foot. So when I stand on that, I'm committing, I'm actually putting weight through this crutch, like I'm supposed to, not through the armpit, through the hand, and there, which is making me shift my weight over onto that leg. And then, because I've got weight through here, there's not as much weight through here, I can tolerate it. And then I step through on a normal big step on the left one. Then come together, so it's almost like, think of like the crutch and the leg are connected together. So when I come through, put weight through, and then this might be 75, 25, whatever, whatever you need, okay? Just more than 50-50, okay? So that will stop you sort of not having enough strength to then go like that, you put the strength through there, and as you get better, less and less and less weight through there until you can, you're sort of basically going through and it's not really doing anything, okay? You've really got the strength up and the confidence up, and maybe you've done enough stretching or you've been in the physio, and got your joint loosened up enough that you've actually got the ankle dorsiflexion movement there to come through and then lift off. Because the other reason why you have to get that dorsiflexion as well is when you're coming, th when you're landing here, coming through, if I don't have that movement, I can't get my leg forward, and what will happen is I'll rise early there to get through. So I'll land, come through, and have to do that early. Now you won't notice you're doing that. If you don't have this dorsiflexion range, so you've got about sort of plus five, and you need plus 15 or something, when you get to this point, you're loaded. Now what that's doing, bang, straight into your Achilles. So you're going from like an ankle problem to an Achilles problem. So that's the other reason why you don't want to be limping, is because you end up pushing off through there, and that'll load you up and give you problems through here. So using that crutch might be a really, getting your ankle joint loosened up, is a really good way to make sure you commit through and push through properly to get enough bend, okay? Now, if people have got the range, they've sort of, they know to step forward, okay? But they're still sort of flat footing it off, meaning when you land, you're landing and sort of flat footing it off. You need to also think about pushing through. So as you're stepping through, we talked about big step with the left, okay? I also want you, once you got to that point, once you step through with that good side, you've got to then push consciously with your buttock and the front of your foot to push through, okay, to get that strength, get that power through, all right? So if I take a normal step here and then I've got to push with that. So step big, non-injured, push through, injured. And that, those two things there are going to start reducing your limp. Now, one more thing about the crutches. Let's have a look at up and down stairs. Whether you're going without crutches or with crutches, the leg preference is the same. But when you go downstairs, it's different from going upstairs. So, when you go downstairs, because you don't have, say, let's go back to my right leg. Say that's my injured foot or injured ankle. Because I don't have the dorsiflexion range, maybe I'm stiff, maybe I've been in a boot, to be able to go down like that. I don't have that range there. What I'm going to do is put that injured leg first. So if I'm going with crutches, I'm going to put the crutches down first and the injured leg. And see I've got that weight on this one to there. Step. So you're going to have to go one at a time like that. Crutches first. Don't go bad leg first, and then try and put your crutches down. It's too dangerous. It's not like the walking where the crutches and the leg go together. 
put the crutches down first so you're solid. Then you can put as much weight when you get there as possible. Okay, so then step. Then don't try and go this way, all right? Try and get that good leg first until you've got the range. So imagine without the crutches, going downstairs like this, you need to hold the handrail and you can put weight through that way. But again, you're trying, you, if you don't have the range there, you're just gonna adopt a limp. If you're gonna go downstairs and, and adopt that limp, there's no point doing that. I would wait until you've got enough range back that when you, and a drop in pain, that you can actually stretch it when you go downstairs. So you make a point of actually forcing that ankle range better only when you're capable. So when you've got that injured leg, down first. Injured, down first. Okay, injured, down first. Now when you're coming up, good leg first. All right? So if you try and put the injured leg first like this, it's too hard, so you weight bear off. You're not learning how to weight bear properly, so there's no point doing that until you've got the range and strength. So don't even try that. Go good leg first, come up. Good leg first, come up. Good leg first, come up. When you've got enough strength and range, sure. Bad leg first, bit of weight, but commit over that leg and push up. So you'll have to go slower, you need a bit of range there. Then you can step normal, non-injured. Get ready for this one again. Use it for balance, push and up. Now. When the injured leg is the same side as this, so when you go upstairs and it's on the left side, okay, maybe it's on the right side, depending on the stairwell, is when you come up, it'll be easier to weight bear over that injured side if you're weight bearing, if you're holding on to the same side. It's gonna be harder when you step on this leg, which is the opposite side to that. So what you have to do is really make sure that you're quite close to that. So you can stay as close, your support is as close to that leg as possible. So when you come over, you're not going this way and staying off it. You're, you're being forced to commit over leg. That's quite crucial. Same with the crutches. If you can get your body committing to that side, your weight bear on that side more, okay, during your walking, every step you take. Think of all the thousands of steps you take. Every time you practice, you're really confirming to your brain that it's okay to put weight through it, and you just get better and better and better at shifting more and more weight on, into that as you improve. So finally, it's 100% on there, and there's no limp, no problems left to right, especially no limp forward and back. See you next time.